Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Run Rehab Guy for runrepeat.com doing another fun shoe review. The shoe that I'm reviewing today is the Topo Athletic Magnafly 3. And what I'm looking at here is a shoe that's fairly similar to another shoe that's been a personal favorite of mine when I've been doing some marathon training, the Ultra Escalante. They both have fairly similar stack heights. Uh, this shoe actually has a 25 millimeter stack height and a zero drop as well, which it shares with the Ultra. Uh, the thing that I really noticed the first about it though, in terms of making comparisons, is while the Escalante tends to have a kind of marshmallowy feel, this shoe tends to be a little bit of a firmer, more fine-tuned, dual-density foam, whereas the Ultra Ego foam is a midsole that's very squishy, it's very comfortable, but at the same time doesn't give you the same pop that you're really looking for, or that spring off of the toe. As I usually like to do, I'm going to give you a bit of a head to toe, pardon the pun, of the shoe, starting from the back edge. So very similar to a lot of shoes that I've worn for Topo, such as the Hydra Venture 2 or the MTN Racer. There's not a ton to the heel counter in this shoe. It's very flexible, very squeezable, gives you a little bit of support, but not so much as to be overly restrictive. I certainly wouldn't call it a motion control shoe by any means. When you're taking a look at the inside of the heel collar, very good cushion, but again, not anything where you're adding a ton of weight or anything that can be overly absorbing, such as the old Kayanos of old, or if you're looking at the older Brooks with that extremely padded heel collar. On the inside of the shoe, you have a new feature actually for the Magnafly. You have an ortholite cushioning system, which is a urethane foam as opposed to an EVA. It also has a antimicrobial feature which is really quite nice, especially if you happen to be like me, you do a lot of gym workouts, you do a lot of long distance running, it tends to be something that eventually causes that inside of the shoe to smell, even if you're very ambitious about your anti-odor routine. When you take a look at the shoe itself, I have given it about probably 80 to 90 miles of wear, in fact, about 87 by my last count by today's run. And really, the logo is still hanging in there pretty well. If you give it this, this sniff test, it's really not giving you that malodorous scent, which is a beautiful thing. When you take a look at the shoe's upper, this is another spot where they've really decided to upgrade quite a bit. So what there used to be is there used to be these overlays of almost like a TPU type of material, fairly similar to what they have in their trail shoe models. And really the shoe weighs in about the same. It's about 10 ounces. But what they've done is they've gone to this double woven pattern where you've got this engineered mesh and you've got these wonderful breathable areas along the front edge and they've reinforced the pattern with that double stitching along the edge or the double weight weave along the edge here and really what they've done is they've given you a little bit more flexibility a little bit more pliability in the shoe without sacrificing the overall structure not feeling like you're overly sloppy in the shoe like some materials such as a fly knit will feel eventually over time when you're taking a look at the outsole of the shoe and the midsole, you've got, again, a very nicely tuned foam, dual density, so you've got a softer top, and then you've got a little bit of a firmer edge. And on the bottom, you've got these wonderful little flex grooves in here that are fairly similar to the ST3. The only difference is you've got a bit more of that rubber outsole to give you some of that anti-abrasion for logging some additional miles. My ST3s actually have about 200 miles on them now, and there's parts of the outsole that are looking a little bit more worn just because, for weight's sake, it's not quite as aggressive. These guys being just a little bit, again, into that 87 mile range, I'm not noticing a ton of wear pattern. There's not really a ton of abrasive spots. Except for that toe off area, I tend to be a little bit more up on my toes when I run. And so there's a little bit of some wear in there where they've taken a little bit more flexibility into account rather than durability. Now where I have been a bit disappointed with this shoe, is the fact that speaking of durability, if you take a real close look in here and you focus in, there is a spot right on the tip of the shoe here where that toe cap meets the actual fabric on the top that's pulling away. And really, it was kind of disappointing that this started happening about really 30 miles into the shoe. And it's steadily gotten a tiny bit worse and you can see where the backing is starting to come off and it's starting to get almost down to midsole. Now, this isn't the case on the other side, but what the other side is doing is it's slightly pulling away at the top. I would imagine somewhere within the next probably 50 to 100 miles, it's gonna be cosmetically altered, but it really hasn't given me any type of pattern where the shoe is sole is starting to talk to me. It's not anything that's going to affect 
the overall sustainability of the shoe, but for $120 MSRP, it's something I really would love to see improved or find a better way of attaching the outsole rubber to the front of the shoe. The only other downside I really have with this shoe, really two of them, is that the lacing itself, while being very light and very pliable, uh, also very resistant to soaking up a bunch of sweat, doesn't really tend to stay tied as well or laced as well as I'm doing some of my cross training exercises or specifically for my purposes in the PT clinic when I'm doing a lot of demonstration of plyometric exercises or changes of direction. It's something I tend to take into account for a shoe that I want versatility out of. I want a shoe that I can feel secure, that once I've double knotted it, it's stuck in place, it's not going anywhere. I would really love to see something fairly similar to what they have in their trail shoe models or even in the ST3 where you've got a little bit of that kind of a catch in the lacing so that you've got that firm grip and you've got that firm ability to keep the laces in check. Now the other thing that I've noticed about the shoe is that it's not terribly reflective. There's no real uh, safety features in terms of like a 3M type of a taping or any type of reflective materials. The only thing that you really get is a bit of contrast on the heel in the logo and then on where they've marked the actual model and the drop of the shoe. And that's one thing that I find uh, curiously absent in a shoe coming out at about this time. Now overall, if I were to rate this shoe, I would tell you that I tend to enjoy it for the miles that I've logged in it. I tend to enjoy it as a cross training shoe. It is a bit tad, a tad bit on the hefty side compared to some of its cousins like the ST3 or even the Escalante given the fact that it's put on some weight is still about 0.8 of an ounce lighter per shoe which is considerable when you're thinking about doing something such as like a T20 workout or a P90X. Now overall, given the fact that the price point on the shoe is a little bit lower, your Escalante is going to run somewhere upwards of about 130 these guys run about 120 you're going to get the ST3 for a considerably smaller price point. If you like something speedier, that's a nicer option within this line. But if you're looking for something just as an entry level beginner shoe that's going to give you some good miles, while not necessarily looking pretty the whole way through, it is a beautiful option to give a try to. Now, if you have any further questions or you want some further details on this shoe, please feel free to head to runrepeat.com and I've got a much more extensive review written out there for you. Otherwise, please feel free to give a like and any questions that you have, please post in the comment section and I would really love to hear from you. Run happy and have a beautiful evening.